I'm going to show you how to remove lens distortion from a plate using Synthize, then add a matte painting to the undistorted plate in After Effects. That'll actually be covered in another lesson. Once you render out the undistorted plate with the matte painted elements added in After Effects, you'll return to Synthize and restore the original lens distortion to your undistorted plate with the matte painting. I know this can all sound complicated, but Synthize actually makes it pretty easy. I'm going to open up a plate that has a lot of lens distortion on it. The footage comes in. I'm going to set it to 30 frames a second because that's what our final After Effects project will be. Everything else looks good. Synthize imports it. Notice this line at the top goes from pink to white as Synthize loads the footage into RAM. And let's take a look at this footage. When the building's right here in the middle, you can see the lines are straight up and down, but then by the time we get to the edge of the frame, the building's really bowing out. So there's a lot of lens distortion on this plate. And if we're going to add painted elements to this, it's going to be hard to make a match. You can see all the way through. Look at the curvature on this building over here. And then as we go later on, it's nice and straight up and down in the middle. So we need to remove that camera distortion from the plate. I need to turn on on a tripod to tell Synthize there's no actual parallax in this shot. Synthize has to have parallax or the motion of the camera for it to do a 3D solve. You're not going to be able to do that because this was shot on a tripod just panning. So it's on a tripod. I'm going to press auto and sit back and relax for a minute while Synthize does the solve. And right now it's just solving for the 2D points. It's looking for uh, points of high contrast and now it's doing the 3D solve. I'm going to say OK. And a 3D solve on a tripod should look like this. It should look like a rounded partial cylinder of points. And as we go back and forth, you can see Synthize has created this digital panning camera. The solve, unfortunately, is 1.4 hex pixels. And that seems not good enough. I, I like to have the solve under 1 hexapixel. So I'm going to go up here to Lens, and I'm going to ask it to calculate the distortion. So I'm just going to click this checkbox, and I'm going to return to the main panel. I don't want to do this again, because that actually would recalculate all of the 2D points. I want to just run the Solve again. And Synthize is actually analyzing the plate to try and figure out where the lens distortion is happening. And then I'm going to go to Lens Workflow. And if you just want to get rid of the lens distortion, you can choose Undistorted. If you plan to add material to this plate, like we're going to do, you need to choose Redistorted. So I'm going to choose that, Redistorted 2, press OK. And do you see how that plate jumped? I'm going to undo and redo this. So I'm going to undo, and that was my original plate. And then I'm going to edit Redo. So basically, it, it bowed in all the edges of my frame to remove that lens distortion that was occurring. So now I need to save out this sequence. So I'm going to say Save Sequence, RGB Included. So I'm going to name it City of the Future Lens Correct Padded. Lens Correct because I took the lens distortion out and padded because it's got these black area around the frame. And I want it to be a JPEG sequence. So I'm going to select that. And after the name, I need to put period 0000 JPEG. Now this tells Synthize that that's where I want the frame numbering added. So I'm going to save that out. And for compression settings, I want to put this all the way up to 100. I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to press Start. And when we're all done, you can see I've got 503 frames of this undistorted version of the scene. If I open them up in Photoshop, I'll need to stitch together a panorama of all of these shots. Let me show you what that looks like. So I've taken five of these frames and stitched them together. This doesn't need to be a perfect stitch job. All I need is something to paint over to add my city of the future. So I'm going to go ahead and do my painting, and let me show you what that looks like. So there's the final painting. So I'm going to take this into After Effects 3D space with my track from Synthize and add all of these elements into 3D space. As I mentioned, all of that will be covered in a separate lesson. Right now we're just concentrating on the undistort, redistort aspect of the project using Synthize.
Here's what the render looks like right out of After Effects. You'll notice there's still that black border around the edge of the image, and none of the painted elements have any distortion on them. Now I don't want to take this movie back into SynthEyes. I want to render this out as a set of sequential JPEGs. It's easier for tracking programs to handle a sequence of stills rather than a movie, and SynthEyes will be less likely to crash if you do it that way. So I exported this movie as a series of sequential JPEGs, and that's what I'm going to use in SynthEyes. Now in SynthEyes, I needed to have saved that original version of the file where I distorted my production footage. Let me open that up again. And I'm going to go to the main camera view. What I want to do is swap out this distorted version of my production plate with the version without the distortion that I painted over. So I'm going to go up here to Shot, Change Shot Images, and I need to choose Redistort CGI, Change to Apply Mode. I'm going to say OK. And then it's going to ask me where that is, and this is defaulting to this original sequence that I loaded in. But what I want is the sequence that came out of After Effects, where I'd added all of these matte painted elements in. Here it is, City of the Future with painting. I'm going to go to Shot, Change Shot Images, Redistort CGI, Change to Apply Mode. I'm going to say OK. And it defaults to my original sequence that I distorted. I don't want that. What I want is my City of the Future with painting and the sequence that I exported. I'm going to open that up. I want to confirm that it's still 30 frames per second. There is 103 frames. Everything looks good. Now, Watch this scene again and notice how it has black padding at the top. And I press OK. And you see how it bowed out my painting to restore that original lens distortion to my painted version. So let's go to the full camera view and let's take a look. Let's look for a dramatic area. Look at how much this billboard is bowing out once it gets to that side. Here it's nice, nice and uh, straight up and down. But back here, when it's near the end, Synthize is actually bowing it out and adding that original lens distortion to it. I want to note, Synthize doesn't seem to like a long file name on your folders. I had instances of Synthize crashing, and it seemed to work better if I shortened my folder name to a more reasonable number of characters. I tend to have very long file names so that I'll have a lot of information of what version they are and what exactly is in them. But Synthize would crash before I shortened this to 14B underscore SETI of the future with painting. So if Synthize is crashing, experiment with shortening the file name. So that shows you how to undistort your plate and then redistort it after you've added your matte painting elements. Synthize makes this really quite advanced technique relatively easy, and this will look really good on your demo reel. Here's the final redistorted version for you to check out.